Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we are going to work with the Foundry Tracker in HitFilm 13. So I'm actually going to do this twice, and one of them will be more of the standard issue tracker situation, and then one will be, oh, we have some problems, okay? So feel free to check in the description below. It will tell you exactly when everything is happening. I'll have a table of contents down there for you, so you can skip right to the part that you need the most, okay? I have two pieces of footage. I have this footage of me walking towards my shed with the camera, and then I have this footage of a chicken walking by. All right, we're going to start with the shed footage first. I'm going to right-click on this, uh, and I'm going to say make into a composite shot. We'll make it 24 frames per second is what I'm looking for. Uh, and so basically you have this footage of me just walking forward like this, okay? Um what I want to do is, is I want to go ahead and drop the foundry on it. So I'm just going to uh, move the foundry tracker on it. And then I will say track features. So now that I've done that, I will go ahead and click solve camera. And then lastly, I will click on Create Scene. Now that I've done that, what has happened is, is that this has created a camera and it has created a point that the camera is um, parented to. If you open up the camera, you will see that all of that information is in here as far as the movement of the camera. And then you'll see that the camera point itself is sitting at negative 1920. Uh, this is a footage is uh, 1080 by 1920. So uh, it's negative 1920. That's where uh, hit film or not hit film, but the foundry has put that camera. Okay. So now going back to the footage uh, and clicking on this, you can see that I have some uh, track points here. And if I move through this, there are some more track points. These track points are on the ground layer, so in theory, I should be able to use these points and establish where the ground plane is. Right now, it's in the wrong place. So I'm just going to drag and grab as many of those as I can get. Uh, and then up here in the lower left-hand corner of the viewer window, it says camera tracker. You click on this under ground plane and say set to select it. And now it's going to recalculate and it's going to guess where the ground plane should be. And as it turns out, yeah, that's actually pretty much where it should be. That's exactly it. Now, if you were to open up a second view and take a look here, um, you can see, yes, it is off to the side. And the camera is pointing in the other direction, which is very interesting. But, you know, it's not necessarily a big deal. Uh, because what you can do is you can take the original camera tracking point and then just recenter it, um, resetting it to the center of the universe, sort of a thing. Okay, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now you would go ahead and put your your uh, models in there, and you would get it all done, right? You would you would you do the rest of your stuff. Okay, so that's the easy way, right? But then you have situations where the camera comes in upside down and everything is weird and you don't really know, uh, you know, what is going on and the ground plane is not going to work. So that's where you have a little bit bigger of a problem. So now I'm going to do that one and this one will take a little bit longer to work through. I'm going to use this footage of this chicken walking by here. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say make it into its own composite shot and you know, I'll just leave it like this. Okay, so I have this chicken and he's walking by here. And also I have this uh, cart driving by back there too, okay? Um, but that is, you know, we're gonna need, this chicken is gonna mess up the track. This cart may mess up the track. So we're going to need to do some work to get rid of those things. Now, to be honest with you, what I would do probably is get rid of the cart driving by. I would use a clone stamp effect 
and essentially remove the cart. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that uh, because I want to show how to get rid of multiple things. OK, so we're going to start by dragging our camera tracker in and we're going to back up. And then again, just like we did before. Uh, oh, actually, before we do that, we're going to set up our mat source. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new plane layer and click OK. So I have my plane and I'm just going to move the plane underneath so that I can see the chicken and I can see the cart. OK, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a um, mat and just mat off the chicken, mask off that chicken. OK, and if I put it above here, you can see there, you know, we're, we're basically taking the chicken out. OK, uh, so now all I have to do is just under here, we're just going to keyframe the position. And as the chicken walks, the position moves, OK? And as the chicken walks some more, the position is moving. And as the chicken walks, here we go, like that, OK? Until the chicken is mostly gone off the screen here. All right, like that, OK? And we just want to scrub through here and make sure that the chicken is mostly covered. All right, so that that's it, all right? now. The second p thing is, is that I have, you know, that situation where that is, uh, you know, I just want to cover that area off. Uh, so I'm just going to create a new mat, a uh, new mask, I mean, and on this one, well, I'm just going to basically, you know, this will be pretty sloppy, but it'll get the job done there. Okay. And then I will just um, literally keep frame the position. I'm going to back up one frame. And I'm just going to move it off because we don't need it until that frame. OK, and then I'm just going to, you know, sort of keep it on this area as it is coming by. Right. So this way, yeah, you know, I just want to make sure that it's covering the cart that's, you know, as it's moving. And we definitely don't want it to go quite that high. But as soon as that card is gone, we'll just add here and then again whoosh, off the screen. OK, so now you can see if I were to play the footage uh, with the mat, you can see that the mat is covering the chicken and it's covering our the cart. OK, that's all I need it to do. All right, so now that can go down below and under the chicken footage uh, in the camera tracker mat source, we're going to use it will be um, mat alpha and the source will be the plane. So the alpha of the plane is what we're using to make sure that we don't get that chicken in here and we don't get that card in here. And so now that we have that, we can go ahead and click track features. Then we can cl click on Solve Camera. And then we can click on Create Scene. OK, um, now if I needed, if I was having trouble with this creation and things weren't looking very good, you can tell hit film, hey, let me give you some more information, all right? For instance, um, I might say, look, this isn't a free camera. It's actually a rotating camera. And actually, it is a rotating camera. In other words, I'm not really moving around. So I could have told it that. Also, I can tell it, um, you know, what size, uh, whoops, what focal length my, uh, or focal type my, um, camera is and all that kind of stuff, uh, which I also know because I was the one that shot this footage. So if I added that in there, then it would give me some, you know, it'd make it even better. Okay. So now that I have the camera here, right. And everything looks good. You can see it's a little bit, you know, off here. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the camera tracker. So now I'm going to go back to my selection tool and, you know, because all of the, the, the ground plane is off. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab these ground plane um, points and say, all right, ground plane, right? Set to the selected. OK, but that is not working. OK, clearly my ground plane is not right and that's not it. So, OK, fine. 
Let's go ahead and reset. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab a point. And that would be my point. I'm going to say create a point. And now that point is sitting out there. I'm going to go ahead and rename that point ground. Okay. And I'll just, just for good measure, I'm going to grab another one. I'm going to grab this one here on the fence. And let's grab this one. And I'm going to create it. And I'm going to say fence. Okay. All right. So now if I look at this from a top view, for instance, you're going to see that these are over here, right? The fence one is on the left and the ground one is on the right. Why is that? Well, that's because the camera is literally upside down. Okay. And you can tell the fact that that is upside down uh, because the green arrow is pointing the wrong way also. If I look at it from the front, for example, you can see the green arrow is pointing. Um, no, it's pointing up. It's just upside down. Uh, the, uh, the, the green arrow of the camera is upside down, even though the camera track is correct. Okay, so here is what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to create a new point and make it three-dimensional. And I'm going to refer to this point as the center of the universe. Okay. All right. Now this is going to be the center of the universe, right? So I'm going to decide, I'm going to pick something that I want to be in the center of the universe. And quite frankly, what I want to be in the center of the universe is this ground point right here. I want everything to be around that because that's where I'm going to put my model. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, let's go back to the top for a second. I'm going to take my center of the universe and I'm going to parent it to the ground point. And now you can see that all the data corresponds to that. But if I right click on that and just say reset, now it is completely reset itself to where the ground point is. Okay. Now I can go ahead and unparent that. And now the camera tracking point that's here that everything else is parented to, if I parent it to the center of the universe, then I can retransform that back to where it belongs by resetting again. And now everything is over here, right? Everything is where it belongs now, right? And if you look, you can see that the fence is on the right, the ground is on the left, the camera is now right side up instead of um, upside down, right? Which is always really a feature, okay? Um, the camera is pointing up and everything is where it's supposed to be. And if I actually go back to the active camera, you can see that the center of the universe is my, um, where, where I'm at. Okay. However, the ground plane is still not correct, right? So I am going to literally manually level the ground plane and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the first assumption here that my camera is level to begin with, and it actually is level to begin with. So if I were to go to four views, so now we're looking here at the left side view, and we're looking here at the top view, and we're looking at the front view, I have these three different views of the three different angles of that camera, and I just want to level that camera. So watch how I do this. I'm going to open up the center of the universe and I'm going to start with my left view and my X rotation of that. And I'm just going to start moving it until it looks like that camera is actually level, maybe about there. Okay. And then I may, and then I'm going to work with a Y. Here we go. Y. And I'm going to rotate that around until I feel 5.5 maybe until it's pointing level. And the Z is, looks to be level two, although I could rotate that as well if I wanted to. But now if you look at my camera, it looks pretty good, right? That looks like that's fairly locked in, okay? Uh, and so I have manually leveled the ground plane, right? So now if I go ahead and bring in my uh, model, which I will do, then I can put him right there above the chicken footage and 
Let me go to a front view real quick here. Come on in. I'm just going to go ahead and under the world transform, just shift the anchor point so that he is sitting on the ground. Going back to the active camera, now I can go ahead and scale him down to about how big I think he probably should be. 5% looks good. And while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and add the animation to him. Uh, and so now when we, oh, he's not moving. Oh, yes, he is. And now we have him throwing the football there, right? Just like that. Okay. So let me go ahead and turn off the ground plane and we'll take a, a, a better look here just to be sure he looks okay. And he's, oh, hike, here he goes, and he's throwing it. Oh, he faked to the chicken, and then he threw long to the other side, the pig over here, and that's it. Oh, did you notice that he jumped way back there? Here's why. I'll tell you why. Because for some reason, um, the foundry tracker does not take these all the way to the end. So what you do is you grab everything that the foundry tracker uh, generated, and you just give it one more like that, okay? And then you'll be you'll be good to go. Uh, and so now when you add your, um, shadow catcher plane and you add your lights and things like that, then you end up with something that looks like this. So pretty much that's it in a nutshell. We had the easy way and we have the hard way. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Feel free to like, and subscribe. If you, uh, if you'll enjoy this kind of stuff, share with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching.